This is Viterbi Voices, your chance to hear stories about research, classes, student life, and more. Directly from our students, faculty, and other members of our engineering community. All right here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Welcome back into Viterbi Voices. My name is Paul Ledesma, and I am the Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And my name is Audrey Roberts. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering here at USC. And also joining us is another one of our current students. Mahima, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Mahima. I'm a junior studying industrial systems engineering at, here at USC. And Mahima, you are from? The great state of Pennsylvania. The great state of the Keystone <laughs> State, am I correct? Yes, the Keystone State. Keystone State, awesome. Well, uh, here we are again recording from our various uh, work and study from home environments all across Zoom, but Mahima uh, has brought us a whole new episode for you. Tell us what this episode's about, Mahima. So for a really long time, I've been fascinated with engineering students who never necessarily planned to be engineers, and I feel like I fall into that category. So with this podcast, I want to do um, interview one of the students I know who doesn't necessarily have that plan and um, her name is Natalie and I'm interviewing her because she's a biomedical student, biomedical engineering student who's also studying to be, um, go to med school. So she's a, she, Natalie is a biomedical engineering student who's also pre-med and planning on going yes. to medical school at some point. Yes. Um, and this is a fantastic topic. Thank you for doing this because we have so many students out there that think it's somewhat of a mutually exclusive decision to say like, oh, do I want to go to medical school or do I want to be an engineer? And I think I like both. And hopefully this, this kind of uh, shreds those misconceptions that students at USC, at least, can study engineering and be well prepared to go to medical school. Yeah, exactly. And I think the most um, enlightening part about this podcast was how Natalie talks about um, sometimes she leads a double life and sometimes she finds it hard to balance engineering and being a pre-med student. But especially coming into her, um, her junior year, she's found it to be a lot easier. And especially with some of her different electives, she's found her two worlds and interests colliding, which is very cool. Well, that's great. Let's get out of the way then and let's meet Natalie and talk all about the idea of being pre-med as an engineer. Hi everybody. So for our first interview, I have a good friend of mine, Natalie here today, and we're gonna be talking about Natalie's experience as an engineering student and also being in the pre-med program. Hi Natalie, how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm tired. I think I'm in a constant state of being tired. What about you? Fair, fair. fair. I think that uh, like COVID, COVID quarantine like taught me how to be lazy and like got me like really used to it. And like now getting back out of it, like it's been a little, a little bit of a struggle, but I'm doing good. Trying just the best I think that anyone can right now. Right. That's all you can ask. So yeah. So yeah, you want to take some time and introduce yourself to our listeners? Sure. Um, hi, guys. I'm Natalie. I'm a junior studying biomedical engineering, and I am also on the pre-med track. Um, on campus, I'm involved in 3D4E, which is a 3D printing club on campus. Um, I'm involved in ASBME, which is Associated Students of Biomedical Engineering, along with being the Director of Member Conduct in Pi Bay to Phi Sorority. I'm also a research assistant at the Song Lab, which is in the Center of Computational Neuroscience where I am partnering with um, doctors at Keck and also my lab PI to work on transcranial magnetic stimulation research um, for a potential trial in our own lab. And yeah, that's kind of a little bit about me. I'm enjoying it. I'm in LA um, doing school and Zooming here, but yeah. So basically you're constantly busy with everything. (laughs) Yeah, oh but it's not everyone too, right? You have, I feel like you have a reason to be tired. I'm just <laughs> tired because. Oh, oh no, no, no. We all have our things for sure. Um, but we're making it work. We're making it work. So at least it's, I keep, or I tell people a lot of times, like, and I think a lot of people would like resonate with this, like the things that I'm passionate about that I actually like doing. So it's worth the time and like worth the energy. So until the point where they're not, then I'm doing okay, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe I'm just yeah. telling myself that, like, <laughs> blind lie, but, like, <laughs> it's working so far. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll keep working. Um, so as you mentioned before, you're not only an engineering student on the pre-med track, you also do research and you're part of Greek life. Not only do you have a busy schedule, but academically, I feel like you're quite 
like your classes are quite loaded, especially being in engineering and on the pre-med track. So I think my first question is, why do both and why not? Because at USC, I think a majority of the students in the pre-med track tend to study one of the sciences as opposed to engineering. So why study engineering and be on the pre-med track? Because I can't imagine it's easy. (laughs) <laughs> yes, good question. I, I get this a lot. I feel like a lot of people are like, what are you doing? Like, just pick one or the other. Like, you're making it so much harder on yourself. And which is a fair, um, a fair question. I would say definitely, like, the majority of, like, people that are, like, you know, wanting to be pre-med, wanting to go to med school would choose maybe a different major. Um, but there are a fair amount of biomedical engineering students that are pre-med. It usually starts out more. And, like, now that we're older, people are kind of figuring out, like, that they don't like it or, you know, they're, it's not worth it. Uh, whatever as they get more exposed to like different aspects of biomedical engineering or just engineering in general um but I don't have like a perfect answer to that question I honestly like have grown I wanted to be I've been wanting to be a doctor ever since I was little like I just grew up wanting to be in the medical field I love working with people I love helping people and I've just always like dreamed of being like in a career where I could be in such a vulnerable level and working with other like patients people and just getting exposed to a lot of different life stories a lot of different like experiences So I've always wanted to be a doctor and then kind of in high school where we're like starting to figure out like maybe like how that was going to be, how that was going to work, like how I was going to do that, like where I was going to go to school and what my major would be. I was always at the, like the point where like, I want to be a doctor, but like, what if I get through four years of college and I realize that like medicine is not for me or I don't want to go to med school or whatever. Um, So like getting a, you know, typical pre-med major felt a little like more limiting to me just because like, if I chose not to go to med school, like what I actually want, could I see myself doing like a career with that knowledge? Like could, like something that would, it would feed into, if that makes sense. Um, And I loved math and science. Like I, I loved math so much and I still love math and just biomedical engineering was a really cool opportunity. It seemed like to kind of marry those interests. Um, Like my interest in math, my interest in like physics and my interest in medicine. Um, So that was kind of why I initially did it kind of as like a not in a safety net in a sense but almost yes like I just wanted to explore and I feel like I had no idea what engineering was in high school so I didn't feel like I could really shut that door without at least trying it and and another reason why is um one of my neighbors he is an orthopedic surgeon in Kansas City and he's kind of taken me under his wing as kind of my mentor and he had always told me in high school like I have seen people in med school that had an engineering background and just the way that they think and the way they can analyze situations and apply that to, you know, their career as a doctor is amazing. And like, I honestly wish that I would have done that. And that also is something that kind of stimulated me to try this out. Um, Again, with the mindset that like, if I didn't like it, or if I decided I engineering wasn't for me and I just wanted to, you know, be pre-med or just wanted to whatever, like I didn't enjoy it, then I could switch. I think you're talking about kind of having the safety net is really relatable in the sense that I feel like being a junior, we're like, I have all this pressure to like figure out what we want to do. And I have absolutely no clue. And like, I think one of the biggest reasons, like people always like ask me all the time or like friends from high school are like, oh, so how, how is it being a poli-sci major? And I'm like, oh, I'm not poli-sci. And they're like, I could have sworn you would have gone into that. And I always talk about how I think for engineering, I think the best selling point was just the mindset that you get out of it. I think being able to think analytically and critically in a way that other majors don't really prepare you for was really, really vital for me deciding on engineering. And I think, especially for you, like being in biomedical engineering, you'd get the opportunity, like even if you decided med school wasn't for you, you'd still get an opportunity to get exposure to the medical industry because it deals with your major a lot. So um, I do know that engineering classes are, quite different from pre-med classes. So how do you feel they've kind of been able to overlap in your interests? Yeah. um, I tell people all the time, like, I feel like sometimes I'm living a double life, like the engineer part of me and the pre-med part of me. Um, But in all reality, biomedical engineering, the curriculum lends really well to the pre-med track Um, because pre-med is just like extra classes that you're taking in order to like be prepared basically to take the MCAT. And so a majority of the classes that are pre-med quote unquote classes are already, I already have to take them for my biomedical engineering curriculums, so like your bios, like your chem, your O chem, your physics. Like I've already had to take that statistics. There's like a biomedical engineering statistics that I have to take for my major that I can like count. So really all that I'm adding is like sociology, you know, biochem that like an extra semester of O chem, whatever. Um, I would say the interesting, like kind of 
dynamic between like taking, you know, engineering classes and pre-med classes is that unlike maybe a typical, you know, pre-med major, I have like, I'm taking them coexisting at once. So like, I'll be taking, you know, the physics, the bio, but also taking like two biomedical engineering, you know, technical classes. So I think that's something that like, a lot of people don't think about it's just like kind of not not only that you have to take the classes but like you're taking them in the midst of taking other major specific classes instead of like kind of sandwiching them in like different semesters if that makes sense um and then also I would just say like something with those classes it it is like feels like a double ice in time because you know pre-med there's a lot of emphasis on like getting an A like getting 100% like being at the top of the class like for your GPA for your med school whatever and then engineering on the other hand like is a little bit more of the sense of, like you're trying your best like these classes are super difficult like you're trying to get the best grades you possibly can but like if you get a b or whatever like it's not the end of the world like you're still going to be employed like it's all about like your work ethic and like what you've done at school over your time um so i feel like that's definitely been like one of the biggest struggles in terms of like classes is kind of balancing like the okay like where do i draw the line of like i'm like that engineering mindset and that pre-med mindset like i'm in these classes where a lot of times people are trying their best, but they're okay-ish if they get, you know, an A minus, a B or whatever. But like, I'm on the hand, like, shoot, should I be, like, I need to get an A or whatever. So I feel like that's been something, like, the kind of double life and something a little bit difficult to balance, like being engineering and pre-med. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine doing that. I thought about being pre-med <laughs> I make it sound more like, you know, battle than it is. Like, it's definitely like not... I mean, it is what every person makes it. I fully believe that. And with anything, you're going to have your people like way, like on either end of the spectrums, like on either side. Um, so kind of figuring out like where I fit on that. I definitely have kind of, well, I guess I'll say this, like I have found that I really love my biomedical engineering classes. And like, I definitely think that like some points when classes have been hard and I've been struggling, I've been like, well, shoot, should I drop this? Like, if I want to go to med school, like, what am I doing? Like, if I want to get a perfect GPA, like, what am I doing? And I think that ultimately I've come to a point like personally where I am going to do the best that I can. I'm going to enjoy and get involved as much as I want to be. And then like, if my grade, like I'm going to do my best, like if my grade is not you know, maybe I won't get into the top, top med school. Like I will get into a med school that like I enjoy. And like, if I can be a doctor, like that would be awesome. Like I'm, I've come to be more in a more relaxed yet very stringent, if that makes sense, like approach to it. Like I still obviously am like very like, okay, like pre-med side, like bang, 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 but like also trying to come out, come at it with a more open mind. I think a big part of your role as a student who's kind of in both programs is like being flexible, but also really honing in on your time management. And I wish I had those kinds of skills. I feel like even as a junior, I'm just like, I need to, I like, I need to get into shape or something. Like it's just not working out. But I feel like, I feel like you're a really good example of somebody who uses like the free time they have, like to the best of their abilities. And you really make the most of your time. You're always optimizing it and figuring out ways to deal with everything. Cause it's, it's a lot like to be honest like engineering is hard enough as is and then you don't want to take like ochem like I can't even imagine so Uh, um, I'm in that right now it's kind of a yeah I I, yeah I I can imagine I'm having fun in my classes I'm taking a stats class right now and it's the best class I've taken I love me too okay wait fun yeah I think you're honestly hyping me up too much like (laughs) everyone is doing so many cool things and working so hard like I just kind of like there's days I think with everyone like where I'm just like trying to survive and then there's days where I'm like okay I can do this you know like it's just very like roller coaster but that is life for everyone in college I feel like to some extent nobody's yeah. really I feel like feeling good all the time <laughs> right for, especially I mean engineering I know from you know experience but so you mentioned earlier that you you could have known you wanted to be a doctor for like the longest time and yeah. I always see that I say my mom has known that she's wanted me to be a doctor for the longest time, but I, like I don't want to. Be one. <laughs> it's like um, a lot of parents, right? Yeah. Yeah, but and like you talk about how it kind of informed your decision when making a um, choosing your mo- or your major. But mm-hmm. um, have you ever thought about specifically what kind of medicine you want to go into? Because I know that's like a couple years ahead. Like you don't have to, but has right. that have there been any particular field that you wanted to work in, and like how is that kind of informed your decisions with like technical electives or just your major in general? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that part of my reason, honestly, for choosing biomedical engineering as my major in general is I 
really am interested in orthopedics and sports medicine. I would love, love, love to go into orthopedics. My dream job actually is to be the orthopedic surgeon for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm from Kansas City, huge football fan, huge sports fan. So like that was, that's like always been my dream. And yes, maybe that's a pipe dream, but like working in orthopedics or sports medicine would honestly be just the best. And so that kind of informed like my decision to be biomedical engineering because I just think that the principles of like biomechanics and physics can be so like intricately applied to the human body. And that was something that I was interested in, you know, initially before. And I found that to be super, like super true. I'm actually this semester taking, it's called orthopedic biomechanics, BME 404. So like finally, or like, I just feel like my dreams are coming true. Like in the lecture the other day, we were talking about, you know, it's kind of a status class. It's a physics class, but applied to the human body. But, you know, we're setting up a free body diagram, but like when, you know, a football player gets hit on their lateral meniscus, like how does that affect the load, you know, whatever. So it's, it's really cool. Like, I feel like it's just kind of like, this is the culmination of this year where I can finally, you know, I'm getting out of those general sciences and I can pick more of my like technical electives to be things that I'm actually really interested in um, and that apply to hopefully like my future in medicine, which I think is super cool because they are really, you know, one and the same to some extent. I think, I feel like when you were talking about that class, it just like sounded like it was made for you. I think that's like the coolest thing because I never, I never wanted to be a doctor, but I I was, I'm also a big football fan and my team is the 49ers and in middle school. Okay, we can fight about this a little bit. (laughs) um, But in middle school, I used to have the biggest crush on Colin Kaepernick. So I was Uh, like, okay, I'm going to be a doctor and then I'm going to be a sports doctor and I'm going to work for the 49ers and then I'm going to meet Colin yeah. Kaepernick and we're going to get together and fall in love. Uh, like that was the plan. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think that's kind of my, like the basis maybe of my love too. Like I just want to be friends with all the athletes. <laughs> like, yeah, literally, that's just, my dream. It seems like the easiest way, right? It just yeah. seems like the easiest way. But um, I, know, I know. I think, I think what's really cool though is um, especially when you get to your junior and senior year level, like our engineering programs allow you to get into more like specialized programs or not programs, but like topics and material. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's really great that specifically your program lends itself to like your interests. Cause I think mm-hmm. not only is that class like super specialized, but it happens to be something you're interested in and you're able to like take it, which I think is like awesome. Um, I totally I think, agree. Yeah. I think the next thing I wanted to talk about was kind of career season because um, for listeners, last week was the general school career fair, and then this week is Viterbi's career fair. So basically on every engineering student's mind right now is how to get an internship. And I think in your case, I'm just wondering if it's a little different, because I know personally for me, I'm looking specifically at ones made for my major, but you know, you're know, you thinking about going to med school, but you're also still a biomedical engineering student. So how does that change your outlook on the career fair or what or what opportunities you're looking for? Are you looking for something more on the medical side or something that hopefully merges the both or still just trying to get more experience with your engineering background? Um, Going back to that point about like, I feel like I'm living a double life. I feel like this is like definitely one of the key parts of that. Um, You know, cause like most pre-med kids, whatever, they're not necessarily trying to get, you know, internships. They're doing volunteering. They're doing shadowing over the summer. They're, you know, researching um, or doing like scribing at hospitals or whatever versus like engineers that are trying to get you know technical internships at like Abbott or you know whatever Medtronic um and so definitely that has been something that I've kind of been like I wouldn't say struggling with but just kind of like figure out like do I want to try to get you know a biomedical engineering industry internship and try to like fill out that side of myself but or should I be focusing more on like the whole volunteering side because technically I don't really need an internship in quote unquote like in order to get it to, into med school, like should I, should I be spending my time volunteering or shadowing or researching or building that med school application that way over the summer? Um, so I definitely think that that is kind of a, a weird line that I'm at right now. I actually, so my plan is I'm taking a gap year after college before I go to medical school, partly just because the biomedical engineering curriculum is so packed that I am not able to fit in all of my pre-med classes plus biomedical engineering classes and have time to study for the MCAT like before that April, June date, basically. So that in my plan right now is that I am going to be spending the summer studying for the MCAT basically and taking it in August, which sadly, you know, studying for MCAT is kind of a full-time job in and of itself. And so I've been kind of trying to think about like what I'm doing this summer. And so I have kind of decided that I am just going to be studying and I'm probably, I'm not going to have, or I guess search for an internship, like if maybe some, like in biomedical engineering if something presented itself, like potentially, and I could have definitely seen myself 
last summer doing a biomedical engineering internship just to like try it out with a timeline, but I was supposed to go abroad. So I, I chose to do that instead. Um, well, I, I tried to choose to do that instead, you know, COVID, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah. But so that's my kind of thought. I have thought a lot about like actively maybe for the, my summer after my senior year, or even into my gap year, potentially doing an internship or some kind of work with like a more technical biomedical engineering company just to like get that experience and see if maybe that is something I'm interested in. Because again, I feel like I really am interested in the biomedical engineering, engineering field and I've learned so much about it. Like part of me doesn't want to completely close that door without having that like hands-on experience in industry. Um, but I'm, again, I'm not sure if I'll end up doing that because ultimately still, I really, you know, see myself as a doctor, want to go into the medical field um, in that capacity. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. The intern or this week in the career for though, it's been funny though, because like all my engineering friends are like, oh, it's like you're going. I'm like, no, actually like I'm not, like I'm not really, you know, actively trying to get an internship or whatever, but it does feel kind of weird. Like I'm not like, I feel like I should be, but I also sh- like have, you know, I don't need, like, I shouldn't be. It's so weird, but yeah. And same with like my clubs and like my activities too. I feel like I've definitely like in the, over the last two years, been trying to find that balance between like, you know, I want to be involved in like engineering, you know, Viterbi type organizations, engineering type, whatever, but also like I do volunteering at like a clinic and like my research and whatever, and like trying to kind of figure out like how heavy I am going on the engineering side and how heavy I'm going on like the quote unquote pre-med side in terms of my activities and involvements. So that's something that also I found that I didn't expect to find coming in that I've had to try to like balance and figure out where my interests meet, like my, my, my requirements, if that makes sense. But yeah. yeah. And most of the time those are the same, like my interests and my requirements have luckily been very cohesive, but. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, just now that you did volunteering at a clinic and I was wondering um, outside of that, is there anything else you've done to kind of explore the medical field so far, whether it be like shadowing doctors or just talking to doctors? Have you done anything in that yeah. like exploration area? Yeah, for sure. Um, at, in high school, I, every summer I would spend a bunch of hours and actually la- my summer after my freshman year as well, I spent majority of my time shadowing doctors around Kansas City. And that was a really exciting experience for me. Just a lot of times through like personal connections, like I've shadowed my own, basically all of my own doctors I have a relationship with. So they let me come in and like shadow them for a couple of days. Um, I, like my mentor that I was talking about earlier, he's my neighbor and he's an orthopedic surgeon in Kansas City. And I shadow him, I, like over my freshman summer, I probably went and shadowed him like twice a week for a month or whatever, because I just absolutely loved it. Like it was just a dream, honestly, for me to go in there. And I think that's been a really cool experience, like, again, fortifying the fact that I do want to be a doctor and go into some sort of medicine, just being in that environment and seeing people in their careers, like, it's always great to hear about it, you know, over the phone or whatever, like, to actually see them in person, like, doing what they're doing and, like, how they're interacting with patients and, like, what my life could look like has been something super awesome. And actually, my volunteering that I do at USC, I volunteer at the Hudson Clinic, which is, like, a five-minute drive from campus it's very close it's a local LA County health clinic and there I've luckily been able to do half volunteering half shadowing so it's kind of the program they set up allows me to do that so I've been able to shadow there as well and just seeing like a different you know group of people different set of doctors like and how they interact and getting to rotate around through the urgent care unit through like the pediatrics unit like it's been really interesting and more of a clinical setting um, which is cool too Um, so definitely that very clear exploration Oh, and I'm also taking a class this this fall, which is a two-unit class with actually my pre-med advisor. His name is Dr. Geller. He's literally the best person alive. I trust him with my life. And he is someone that I, with pre-med advisors, you have to like go out and actively find one. You are not like assigned one as you are for like your major or whatever. So I have my BME advisor. And then I also have my pre-med advisor that I talk to about like prepare, make sure, making sure I'm on track to graduate and get all my requirements and whatever. And he's teaching a class called contemporary issues in healthcare. And every week, um, a different professional in the medical field comes in and talks about their career. And we go through like a case study of something that they've seen before and kind of talk about different medical issues that are being presented. It's so like last week, um, a pediatric surgeon came in the week before a family medicine doctor came in. Like, so that's really cool. Also, I feel like career expo- for career exploration that USC has given me this opportunity to like have like a class setting like where I'm getting to explore as well, which is cool. And, and it also, you know, fits in my curriculum. So again, like I'm getting to do my biomedical engineering things, but I also have that like getting medical experience um, or at least like 
more knowledge about it. So that's been cool for me this semester. Yeah. And I think, I think the most kind of eye-opening thing that you've talked about so far is the, the idea that you feel like you're leading a double life. And um, like as somebody who has interests very completely removed from engineering, yes. I, I also feel like that sometimes I feel like I definitely turn my brain off differently. Um, I feel like mm-hmm. the way I approach certain things, like I'm involved in like public policy groups and like political groups on campus. So I definitely feel like that sometimes. Um, but I wanted to talk about kind of I feel like you have a really good balance of it, but do you feel like overall both aspects of that are being fulfilled as much as you'd want them to? Because I think, I think obviously if you were just an engineering student, that would fulfill, like you'd fulfill your major requirements, but you'd really get to explore it and everything. But then also having pre-med, which is just a little removed from engineering, I think you could argue, do you feel like you still are getting enough fulfillment out of both of the, both of the areas? I, I do. I think that it's been a growing experience. Like I definitely would not say that like freshman year, I felt like I was really balanced. I think freshman year, I went more heavily on the engineering side of things. I joined like, you know, my 3D printing organization and I joined like the Viterbi Student Ambassadors and I joined like freshman academy coach. So very engineering heavy. And then kind of realizing like, okay, so like I've got this going on. I really enjoy it. Like I also need to kind of boost this other side of my, you know, personality, other side of my interests. So kind of then, like, I feel like the last year, sophomore year is kind of was a good shift. And honestly, going into this year has been a good shift of kind of balancing them and kind of marrying my two interests and making that more reflective in my activities. Um, And I think that's something that's been fun to actually do, though, is I've been able to kind of combine them. So like research, for example, like that is something that, you know, is very important for your med school application as a pre-med, honestly, for engineers as well. But uh, research, you know, doesn't exactly matter, like what you're researching. It's more of like a mindset. So I have gotten involved in a biomedical engineering lab through Viterbi. So I feel like that's something cool, like where, you know, technically like I am like checking both box, like checking the box for research, but also like I still get to do it in something that I'm really interested in, like in the biomedical engineering department, which is really cool, like computational neuroscience. Um, so that's been cool. Um, yeah. And I just think through like talking with my advisor, I've been trying to like figure that out. That's definitely been super helpful like, okay, looking at my list of things and being like, okay, like, you know, which side or whatever. And I honestly, if I'm going to be honest, like, I don't think I really should ever see them though as two different sides because they really are so interconnected. Like the things that I'm doing that are quote unquote engineering, you know, are super applicable to like my dreams in medicine and like my future and like applying those like thinking processes or whatever to, you know, my future. So I really do see them as one and the same as much as I do see them as separately. So that's kind of contradictory what I'm saying, but yeah. I feel like everything, I feel like everything in this world is a contradiction these days. Literally my life. Yeah. It's just, (laughs) you're like, there's not just like two ends of the spectrum. You're just like on the spectrum entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And isn't that just college in general? Like you never really know what's coming next. Like, I feel like if anything, I've learned to just go with the flow and like, if, it, if today I'm really interested in doing this, like, I'm going to do this. Like, if today I'm really interested in doing this, like, I'm doing this. So, yeah, I feel like that's kind of my personality. And hopefully it's going to work out in the, in the, if I graduate, <laughs> when I graduate. Yeah, um, this question just kind of came to me as we were talking about kind of, or how you were mentioning your study abroad plans and how they had to change mm-hmm. due to the pandemic. But I think, I mean, obviously the pandemic has affected everybody in either personal ways or just I feel like our new normal is just going to be so different from what we used to experience. But I think, I think this is a question that, that um, I think particularly the pandemic has impacted a lot of people who want to go into the medical field with their perspectives. So, you know, the fact that like, this is our first and hopefully our last pandemic that we live through in our lifetimes, um, how has it either changed or just, how has it changed your perspective on your dream job? And, and are you more vo- motivated? Are you, afraid more like what has it done to change your mindset about entering the medical field yeah that's such a great question I think that if anything this has kind of motivated me more to be involved like just seeing the medical field and you know whatever from more of like a cultural and ethical angle as like I've been motivated to do because of COVID I think that that's kind of given me even like a broader sense of like the issues at hand and instead of you know, before I was just drawn to like, you know, the technical side of medicine, like I want to help people. But like now, like, through COVID, I feel like I've just gotten a more holistic view of the medical field. And like, I can see the ways in which I want to help people at a lot more, 
at a lot of different angles rather than just, you know, healing them, quote unquote. So I think that's really cool. Just, I think that it's motivated me more in the sense that I just want to be someone that can help change or help, you know, improve life. Like, so just, it's such a hinge of society, especially as we're seeing right now, like how everything is kind of, you know, revolving around like health in sense like all aspects of society so I just think that it's motivated even more to like be in that mix like I want to contribute and like I want to be part of it so yeah (laughs) yeah I feel like especially for like a lot of my friends who are pre-med like the pandemic has just kind of like given them another reason for why they want to go in and they just feel even more motivated um so I think I think that's really nice to hear especially because obviously this isn't like the pandemic is not really great for anybody at this point but it's nice to know that it's not only motivated you, but it's kind of brought your purpose to like the forefront. Like you finally, like not only are you seeing the technical aspects, but you really see the emotional aspects and how this, like your job has a potential to affect so many lives. Um, I think my last question, even though I don't, I don't want this to stop. I really love talking to you. Yeah, same, um, same. Is, um, for somebody who's considering engineering, somebody who really loves math and science like you did, but they also do know that they want, to be a pre-med student, but they just feel like it's not feasible or they just feel like it's an overwhelming amount as is, what would you say to them to just like, what would you say to them to reason why engineering and pre-med can work and why it's worth doing? That's a great question. And again, this is all, you know, from personal experience, like there's no textbook on this. And like, you know, my mind, I'm not going to tell you that it's been perfect. Like I have gone back and forth over the last couple of years, just like you know, is this what I actually want to do? Like, is this worth it? And I feel like my greatest piece of advice is like, don't be scared that you're ever going to like, don't be scared of like locking yourself in because I think that the whole goal of college just to like evolve in your interests and your passion and like what you want to do, like you're trying to figure out what you want to do. And I think that biomedical engineering combined, you know, with pre-med has given me a great way to do that, kind of advocate for my own learning and my own interests while also like pursuing a career that I love. Um, or that I hope to love, I guess I should say, and that I think that I'm interested in. And so I think that would be my best advice to just, I would come at it with an, ex- like an exploring, explore, exploratory, exploratory, exploring perspective. I don't even know um, what I'm saying. Sorry, my brain's right. <laughs> um, I think that I would suggest like that it can work if you're willing to make it work. And if you're willing to, you know, have those moments of doubt and those moments of confusion, but ultimately realize that like your passions and like your goals in life are bigger than that. I think that that's something that motivates me continually. Um, and like my mentor texts me all the time, like you're smart, like you can do this. Like whenever you're unsure, like just know that like there's light at the end of the tunnel, like it's going to be great, like working now and like, you know, trying to figure out now, like balancing how to be like, in bi- biomedical engineering and pre-med, like it'll be worth it at the end. Like it is a long road, but like it'll be worth it. And I just think that that's something that like I would suggest to all you know, incoming students that are maybe unsure um, because a lot of people haven't been exposed to engineering or biomedical engineering. So how do you know unless you try? Um, you can always change your mind. You can always, you know, drop the engineering or go only engineering. I just think it's a great gateway into like, you know, you're interested in this and like, like let's just try it out. And I think that I've grown in appreciation for the medical field a lot more since being a biomedical engineering student and kind of seeing like a more niche way in which I can impact the medical field, which I think is like something that I really appreciate from my experience so far. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really great way to end this because I think one of the things that you've emphasized the most is how, even though it is a lot of hard work, it is your passion. And sometimes like the work doesn't seem that hard in the end because you're working up to a bigger goal. And um, this is only my second semester in my new major because I switched and I cannot tell you how nice it feels to be excited about my classes, but like to like want to actively do the work. Like it's not like like I put off any of the homework to like the later. It's like I want to be able to do these problems. I want to like sit down and like figure out the stuff conceptually. And it just I think I think we have I feel like we always associate like hard work with not wanting to do stuff. And I think in college, especially if you really love your major or at least you're really passionate about it, you'll start to realize that the hard work isn't hard because you don't want to do it it's hard because it's supposed to be hard it's because there are problems we have to go out and solve in the world and they're going to take it's hard they're just hard problems that's why they haven't been solved yet and I think I think you just have to remember that like your passion will guide you I think that's really like the most important thing and 
like the work won't seem that hard after all. I think like I could spend like hours just talking about my statistics class. I, I love it that much. Oh, it's so beautifully said. Because I think for so long, especially in high school, I think I always ask, I always ask myself, oh, like when am I ever going to need this? Like when am I going to need to know how to do integrals ever again, right? But But now I feel like in college, I like finally get to see like the work I'm doing in real life problems. I think especially with engineering so much of what we learn is like through like real life problems and like case studies and stuff. And like, we finally get to see what our work can do and what it can implement. And I think that just, that just drives me more and more every day. And like, I love my homework. <laughs> it's insane to say, I never thought I would say that. And it's just like, we get excited to go to class and it's just, it's just the best feeling when you, you get that work and you're willing to do it, but not only willing, but you're eager to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that's a really great way to end it. Um, Natalie, it was so great to see you. Um, yes, I feel so like I should. I feel like I should just make another interview with us talking <laughs> more because I want to. Um, I'm down. I'll come anytime. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> but is there anything else you want to say to the listeners? Or no, stay safe, stay healthy, keep your head up. That's it. It's great to I'm be like here. Thanks for having doctor. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doctor in training. I fake it till I make it. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Natalie. Of course, yes, thank you. Awesome, and we're back. Thanks for that episode, Mahima. Of course, I'm, I'm really excited for this one uh, because, well, not only did I have really, a really good time interviewing Natalie, but I think, especially when I went into engineering, I pretty much thought that there was one set track for me, and um, talking to people like Natalie, um, it just really opened my eyes to all of the different opportunities I have with my engineering skill set, so... I'm really excited for what the future holds. Did either of you ever think about uh, going to medical school? Was that ever in one of your plans growing up? No, not not for me. Um, it wasn't for me, but it was definitely my parents' plans. For me. <laughs> we talk about this with Natalie. Yeah, well, I, I do. I do love this episode because it, I mean, there's so many students out there that I think as they grow up, um, they they see themselves kind of leaning towards that idea of math and science, and and the the iconography in um in kind of the professional world or like heroes of the u.s or things like that uh doctors uh, always kind of rise to the top as like okay well matt the end of the math and science path is is a medical doctor and there's nothing wrong with that of course that's awesome um, but i think a lot of times being an engineer or studying engineering is, is not seen as as one of those opportunities because it's somewhat of like this um, uh, this this very silent group of people that work professionally to make a difference in the world and to help people. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're kind of bridging that gap a little bit more and helping students understand how engineering can do those things. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's super important to know that I, I've always definitely thought of an engineering degree, especially at the undergraduate level, as something that can open a lot of different doors. You're definitely not constrained to you know, being a mechanical engineer if you're studying mechanical engineering. So I think it's really cool to have this perspective. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, oh, sorry. Um, I was just going to say, I think my favorite part of this interview was the last part where um, Natalie and I talk about actually the pandemic and how it's kind of changed our perspective on the medical field and going in and being a doctor and how much impact doctors can have on a daily basis in everybody's lives. So I think this this is a very timely episode, but also I think this is an episode that every engineering student should take into consideration about how there's more than one path out there and not all of them necessarily include engineering. Yeah. Well, thank you. How are, how are you two doing? Mahima, how, how's life in, in Pennsylvania? It is okay. I feel like um, I was telling Audrey earlier, but I feel like I go to bed later and later every day. <laughs> I, I try to go to bed at a reasonable time, but I just stay up doing work and um, I'm always tired. I feel like I'm just constantly tired. Constantly tired. That's a definite thread uh, right now. Audrey? Um, yeah, I mean, as a human said, we were kind of chatting about this, but I definitely, uh, it's just kind of like a constant uh, stream of, of work all in the same space. So yeah, every every day I'm like, tomorrow I'll, I'll go to bed at a reasonable time, but uh, I don't always or I rarely meet that goal, but it's okay. Um, we're making it through. Um, and I think um, one nice thing about the remote environment is sort of the flexibility a little bit. Yeah. But I think it, it, it is sort of getting tough to sort of have the same thing every day, you know, get up out of bed, 
walk 10 feet to, to your desk and, and start with, with everything. So I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, I don't have the grueling academic schedule that you guys have. And, and I know that also that compressed semester is you're definitely feeling it right now. I mean, right. Is that, that's, that's a big part of it too. We were kind of debating that a little bit, actually. Right. Um, I think I, we, I think both of us maybe feel in the way that like our actual lectures kind of feel like they have a little more material in them. Um, but I, I almost feel like, you know, every class I have a homework due every week and that's kind of what it's always been for me. So it doesn't feel like too much more on that end for me, but it does feel like more like actual content material I need to learn in a shorter amount of time. Um, now, so uh, Audrey, you're back in Denver now. So you're, mm-hmm. you're no longer in LA. Is, is this just a, a quick trip or are you back there for the rest of the the semester um I'm back here for a little bit of time um, okay okay yeah um yeah it's uh, this whole thing man it's it's I mean we've said it so many times on the podcast it's it's hard to to fathom that it continues to go on but it's also becoming the new normal um it's really interesting who knows I hope that everyone that's listening is doing okay I know there's various levels of various versions of normal out there and I, I think that when it comes to the admission world out there when you're a high school senior um, or a student that's a, a transfer student thinking about applying uh, for an undergraduate, um, I think everyone is worried like, well, you know, my situation is incredibly unique. And I think that first off, everybody's situation is incredibly unique and recognize that on the common application, there will be an opportunity there if you haven't opened it up already to explain to us how the pandemic has affected not only just your usual day to day, but if there's anything uh, even more um, stressful or strenuous that, that has affected you or your family, uh, make sure that, that you put them there. We're, we're going to be taking all of that into consideration. Um, and again, for we, we've gotten this question so often lately that I feel like I have to say it every day. Um, don't worry about tests like SAT, ACT. If you're a high school student, we're entirely test optional. And that means that uh, if you do not submit a test score, there's no penalty. And if you do submit a test score, there is no benefit. I want to be clear about that. There's no penalty if you don't, and there's no benefit if you do. So please, there's still, we've gotten some weird questions lately in emails about like, maybe I can fly to another state and take it where a testing center is open. I'm like, no, don't do that. That doesn't do anything at all. So please just forget about tests when it comes to fall 2021 and the SAT or the ACT. Just forget about them. I already have. Uh, And to be honest with you, they weren't that helpful to begin with. So uh, just, you know, focus on doing well in the environment that you are, keep safe, keep healthy, keep your family safe, keep your family healthy, and uh, hopefully we'll all get through this together. Um, just remember the application is available now, and it is due December 1st for competitive merit scholarship consideration, and uh, we look forward to receiving your applications. We already got a, a, a fair amount already, but uh, we're excited about it. And here we are in October. Can you guys believe it's October? <laughs> no. Yeah, I can't either. I cannot either. So we're, we're almost there. When does the semester end for you all? I think um, November like 13th is the last day of undergrad classes. Yeah. Um, but then we have finals. Um, but then graduate classes are on like a little bit of a different schedule. Um, yeah. So. So undergrad, you guys are all ending before Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. I think across the board. I think graduate is just like a week later. Yeah, a week later. Okay. Well, hang in there, guys. So you are uh, almost there, just about uh, five, <laughs> weeks, five weeks away then, five, six weeks away. So good luck. Wild. All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone.